In December 2019, Marin became Finland's youngest prime minister, aged 34. I won't change the way I behave. Since then, as well as navigating the pandemic, she's accelerated Finland's request to join NATO and committed to reaching net zero by 2035, one of Europe's most ambitious climate targets. Marin projects an image of contemporary leadership with a strong element of the personal. Prime Minister of Finland is facing some heat over a video shot at a private party. 36-year-old behavior is unbecoming of a prime minister. She faced an official inquiry which cleared her of misconduct. I am human. During these dark times, I too need some joy, light and fun. Appearing with her New Zealand counterpart, Jacinda Ardern, yesterday, there were many questions about the similarities between the leaders. One reporter tripped himself up. A lot of people will be wondering, are you two meeting just because you know, you're similar in age and you know, got a lot of you know, common stuff there, you know, when you got into politics and stuff. My first question is, I wonder whether or not anyone ever asked Barack Obama and John Key if they met because they were of similar age. The Finnish Prime Minister arrived in Australia just a few hours ago. Sanna Marin, welcome to 7.30. Well, thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here. Why is Finland's Prime Minister in Australia? Well, actually, I'm the first Finnish Prime Minister to ever visit Australia and we just arrived from New Zealand and we also have a business delegation with us. Mm. I see a lot of possibilities for our countries to cooperate even further. We have very good bilateral relations already, but I see a lot of possibilities it, to it, deepen them. It's a very long way to come. What made you come now? Uh, what made me come now? Mm. Uh, of course, we always have to plan the schedules mm -hmm. with other prime ministers as well. And this was uh, the right moment just before Christmas. I think uh, this is a very good moment. We have a lot of things uh, in common, as I mentioned. And also now European Union and Australia are negotiating and trying to get, for example, the free trade agreement. Mm. And I think this will be one of the top issues that we will discuss tomorrow with your prime minister. Now, um, the war in Ukraine has obviously increased Finland's profile in the world. It's accelerated your request to join NATO. Um, the Russians threatened Finland, in fact, when that idea first, uh, first occurred and said that there would be military and political consequences for Finland. Your country has been invaded by Russia before. Could it happen again? We have been in war with Russia uh, decades ago, so we feel a lot of sympathy also for the Ukrainians that are now fighting uh, against, uh, against Russia, that is brut brutally attacking Ukraine and its people, especially the civilians. Mm. We are seeing devastating uh, footage every day of the electrical network, the water network being destroyed, also uh, people killed every day in, in Ukraine. So we feel a lot of uh, empathy and, and sympathy for the Ukrainians. We also have our history with Russia and now we are joining NATO because we don't want ever again see war in Finnish soil uh, by Russia. You are one of the youngest leaders in the world. Did you doubt yourself at all coming because you had to confront such huge crises, first the coronavirus and then the war in Ukraine, which upended Europe? Well, I think we were all in the same situation, whether of our age or our gender or other issues. We all faced the global pandemic and it all was a hit uh, to, to us and our citizens, our societies. Then the war came, mm. uh, the Ukrainian war, uh, and now we are also in the middle of energy crisis. So there have been many challenges, many crises, but I'm also very proud of the Finnish nation, the Finnish citizens that have been able to cope all through this um, and we still have problems ahead I think. Now you're also an icon of progressive leadership really around the world. Um, you, you lead a coalition dominated by women but you've also described the expectations of you as a trap. What do you mean by that? 
Well, we have five parties uh, in mm. our government, all led by women. Uh, four of us are quite young and, and actually three of us have had children during this governmental period. So that only reflects how equal Finnish society is, that there are possibilities uh, for uh, people of different age and different generations. But of course, we also have problems in our societies. Mm. For example, the gender pay gap still exists. Mm. We have to work on that. Uh, and also we have problem with uh, violence against women. So we have to work on many equality issues. And we are also, also seeing double standards still uh, today. Uh, women have to hark twice as hard uh, as mm. men. And we are seeing that uh, all around the society. And I think it's very important for everyone that we will work uh, for better equality. And we have made many reforms, for example, the parental leave reform, mm. which I'm very proud of as well. Um, you're also a product of your country's um, record in social mobility. How important was that in enabling you to reach the position that you have? I think it's very important that we have such a good educational system in mm. Finland. We are a small country, only a population of five million people, and we cannot afford uh, to lose someone in the society. So we need everybody on board. And that's why we have built a very good educational system that we want to enhance even further. And we have also made reforms here uh, during this governmental period. So of course, it played a key role uh, in my life and many other people's lives as well. So it enables, for example, people from uh, different backgrounds, uh, also from from poorer families to enter universities, there's no tuition or fee for Finnish citizens to go to university. So mm. I think it's very important that we have a very good educational system. Um, it, since you've been the leader of the country, have you, have you confronted a double standard in the way that people deal with you, not just in Finland, but in the rest of, in the, rest of the world, in your dealings with others outside of Finland? When you are in a position that you're prime minister, uh, then you don't face that kind of, of uh, double standards. Uh, Do you mean you don't your... face it or you're not aware of it because, of your, because you are somewhat separated? I think the status, it protects mm. you. Mm -hmm. So I'm not speaking on behalf of myself, mm. but, but I know that, that many women are struggling still in the society, that they have to work twice as hard, they have to do everything, they have to be flawless uh, to get ahead, and still they are questioned. Are you going to have children? How it will affect your career? Can you do all your work? Etc. So we are seeing double standards still for women uh, in our societies, and especially people that are not only uh, gender, but also maybe from different backgrounds, different, different ethnicities and, and have uh, those minority statuses. Mm -hmm. Well, what, of course, one of the most um, famous pieces of media about you is the, the video of you dancing. And it's indeed, it's a curiosity of our age that one of the, one of the, the millions of people know you only, in fact, through the, through the lens of that video, a video of you dancing. And you were criticised for it at home. Um, you, were even, you even took a drug, drug test as a result of it. How do you explain the response to the video, to the outrage that people expressed at the time? Uh, do you mean outrage uh, of uh, people? I, I mean against... the criticism that you got, with people saying that it was well, not, not, a, not a proper yeah. thing for a prime well, minister actually, to Well, actually, there wasn't that many people that mm -hmm. criticised. It was mm. more of journalists and media that, mm. that made this uh, media spectacle or frenzy out of it. Mm. But the people were very supportive. People would stop me in the streets and say that we are supporting you mm -hmm. and that keep on dancing, that, that <laughs> they didn't see or feel that there was something that that wrong mm. with that. Yeah. So it was maybe only uh, a spectacle because it was interesting from the media perspective. A, a spectacle, but nonetheless, when you, you, made, a, you made a speech about it, um, which yeah. I, I think is one of the reasons it, it went around the world is because of the passion that you showed mm. during that speech. And you said, during dark times, I too need to have some joy, mm. light and fun. And you were, you were in, on, on the edge of tears or you were crying a little when you made that speech. What was going on at that moment to cause that emotion? Well, I think as politicians, we all can also be human beings. I'm a, a still a quite young person, 37, and, and I want to act like my aged people act. I meet my friends, I go dancing, I go out if mm. I have a free time even though I don't have that much free time. It was during the summer uh, in, in my holidays. So 
I think it's very important that politicians can also be human beings. Mm. Uh, but it was very heavily uh, scrutinized by the media. And I think it lasted three weeks of, mm. of that frenzy is that in what Finland. Caused, is that what caused you to have that moment when you well, were talking about it? Well, of course, it's, mm. it's very hard uh, us humans to... Mm. to for every day that pressure that you did something wrong, even mm. though you didn't do anything that wrong. I went dancing with my friends. I don't think still that that was something terrible that I did. I just want to come back to the question of gender and the degree to which I know you say that you are protected from it by the, the status that you carry when you're in the world. But Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, for example, when I meet other leaders, yes. they are... Uh, There's protocol. Yeah. When I meet prime ministers or mm. attend to meetings or do my job, uh, in this position, we don't focus on my mm, gender. We course. focus on the issues that are mm. in the table. And I hope that we will see also in the future an, a, uh, a place where we as young women, for example, weren't always asked about mm. our gender. Sanamarin, thank you very much indeed for giving us some of your time on this trip. Thank you so much.